What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie298, Financial Office, getting through the power of the internet. And yes, I'm late to the party once again, but in all fairness, this article launched just as I was traveling for E3. Then I came home and rested for E3, so this is the first chance I've had to talk about this, but I do still want to talk about it. And that's this hit piece article written by the folks over at CNET, where I'm prominently featured. So if you haven't seen a video about this yet, let me be the first to tell you. I'll summarize it here a little bit. Here's the article called Why Are Gamers Angry? And this is on the CNET website. I believe it's written by Ian Schur, who actually uh, interviewed me about this article. And I gave him some information and some advice and some things that he did use. Most of my advice basically went completely ignored, which was kind of frustrating. Uh, but why are gamers angry? If you watch a lot of YouTubers these days, whether it's Clean Prince Gaming or Young Ye or, or The Quartering or whoever it is, you're going to notice that there's a very particular tone. Even here on my channel, there's a very particular tone. The videos tend to be very, very negative, and that's what this article is about. Now, Ian actually reached out to a lot of people that he talked about in this article, including myself. Um, I decided to talk to him about it because, again, number one, I didn't expect this to be a hit piece. I didn't think he would go after advertisers the way that he did. We'll talk about that as we go through the article. Um, I wanted to talk to him because I wanted to try to steer, steer him in the right direction to get him to understand why my videos have become so negative, why most of YouTube's videos have become so negative. So what I tried to explain to Ian during my phone interview, um, the primary thing that I was really trying to drive home is that the gaming industry is in a worse state than it's ever been. And that's why gamers are so frustrated and so irritated. Chances are, if you are watching this at home, you are in a frustrated, irritated state with the gaming industry. Um, a $60 game no longer costs $60. A free-to-play game no longer only costs $60. You're expected to buy day one DLC and season passes and future DLC and characters that have been ripped out of the game just to be put back in. You're, you're expected to buy cosmetics, sometimes game-altering stuff in the form of microtransactions. It, it, this game is no longer budget-friendly. If you're a budget gamer, you can spend a large fortune on a single video game. And, and this is one of the things that's got all of us so frustrated. So we as YouTubers are trying to talk about those business practices. We're trying to talk about the companies that indulge in those practices. We try to talk about the games that are ruined by those practices so that you, the consumer, the savvy consumer, can choose which companies to support and which games to support based on the ethics, based on the way that they treat the games, based on how they monetize the games, and which games are actually worth your money and which aren't. And even though I am quoted in the article several times, I am never quoted for having said something like that, justifying the anger and the frustration that we as gamers and, and, and consumers feel at this point, because that is justified. And that's why these videos are justified. If the gaming industry cleans its act up, if these stop doing this terrible stuff, then we've got nothing to talk about other than positive things. And then I'm going to go on and talk about how much I enjoy E3, how much I enjoy the games that I want to play. If there's nothing bad to talk about, we have nothing to talk about. So just stop doing bad things, gaming. The second thing I try to get the journalists to understand is that YouTube absolutely rewards negativity now. And that's partially because you guys are frustrated, you guys are irritated. So when we talk about things that are frustrating and irritating, you guys want to engage with that. And YouTube right now works on two major things. Whether or not a video gets shared, whether or not a video gets delivered to your recommendation is based on two major things. The first of which is engagement. So if the title of a video is, is anger-inducing or is, is negative, you're more likely to click on it. If the thumbnail is more negative, you are more likely to click on it. And negative content performs better than uh, positive content because people tend to watch negative content all the way to the end. When they see positive content, they're not emotionally engaged, so they tend not to watch it. YouTube knows this. I've talked to YouTube about it. YouTube is effectively making the world a worse place by encouraging negative content on its platform, but YouTube will tell you that that's not what we're doing. We're just trying to create, uh, uh, encourage content that people like. So if the watch time is high, the engagement is high, we don't really care whether it's positive or negative. That's up to you guys, and, and ultimately that's not up to me, that's up to the audience. But yes, the title of this video was probably negative because I wanted you to click on it, and I want you to watch it to the end. Now we're going to deep dive all of this stuff, and we're going to deep dive the article itself, and I'll talk to you about how I feel about it. But before we do that, I want to make sure that the article itself can exist. I don't have a problem with that. He can say and do whatever he wants to do. That's fine by me. What is not fine is the fact that he contacted YouTubers' advertisers to try to get those advertisers to pull away from those channels. That is dirty. That is unfair. That is foul play. 
Now, presumably, Ian feels that negativity has no place on the internet and that YouTube gamers should not be getting paid to criticize uh, gaming culture and the gaming industry, apparently. Um, but here he is doing that exact same thing, criticizing YouTube, criticizing YouTube gamers, and he admitted on his Twitter feed that he contacted advertisers telling them to pull from those channels and was successful to get them to pull from people's channels like The Quartering. But right here in this very negative article, we see an advertisement from CBS Sports Digital. Should we be writing CBS Sports Digital? No, I would never encourage that. I think that is foul, dirty play. I have no clue why Ian thought that was okay to do. If I had known he was going to do that, I would have never participated in this article to begin with. That is, that's absurd. I mentioned in this article several times, and I don't think I come off as looking particularly bad, but I certainly don't come across as looking that good either. Um, I told him that people love negativity, um, and I said that, of course, my Francis character is a, a parody, a mockery of those angry, overweight gamers who take video games all too seriously, which all of that is obviously true. Of course, I don't think you need to tell Ian that because he is a journalist um, who wrote a very negative article hating on YouTube creators. So obviously Ian knows that. He knew that this uh, article would perform very, very well because people love negativity. I also told Ian that you guys had kind of bucked back because my articles and my videos had been so negative recently about the gaming industry, right about the time that Anthem dropped. You guys are getting tired of me just hitting that dead horse over and over again. I told him I tried to reverse it. I tried to make it a little more positive. I tried that several times where I uploaded only positive videos for a few weeks at a time. It results in very, very low views. Uh, like I said, YouTube just shows the more negative you are in the title, the more negative you are in the, the thumbnail, the better your chances of engaging and the better your chances of performing on YouTube are. The more money you make as well, just so you know. But nowhere in this article does he quote me as justifying how frustrated we are with the gaming industry. At no point does he talk about the fact that YouTube encourages negativity. He does talk very briefly about the fact that your audiences and people at home tend to like negativity, they like anger, they like hatred, they like to embrace that. That's the world we live in, the America that we live in right now. So at least he touched on that. But everything else I said just got thrown by the side. It's really frustrating. And if I can go off on a tangent here, I just want to go ahead and say how this proves that uh, people like that writer or the author of this article I'm showing you right now from the New York Times just failed to understand YouTube as a whole. This article was all about Caleb Kane, who was a college dropout looking for direction. He turned to YouTube and YouTube turned him into an alt-right radical uh, but YouTube did no such thing. YouTube delivered Ka Caleb Kane the videos he wanted to see. This exact same way it does for, for my videos right now, if you're choosing to watch them, it's because you've told YouTube you wanted to see this video. If you are one of these authors, let me show you something really cool. Uh, here's a little experiment you can do. Log out of YouTube, delete your cookies, log in in an incognito mode, and then look at the front page of YouTube. And you're going to see a lot of very safe, very generic, very easy to understand and easy to digest advertiser friendly stuff you might see the slow-mo guys you're gonna see jimmy fallon and jimmy kimmel you're gonna see some music videos rated pg and if you're really really lucky you might see a couple of gaming videos that are nintendo related or something along that lines a few movie trailers generally the same kind of stuff you're gonna see on television now let's say you click on Mark Ruffalo getting interviewed at Jimmy Fallon. Uh, YouTube knows you like two things. Chances are you probably like Mark Ruffalo and his role in the Avengers. You probably also like Jimmy Fallon. So it's more likely to show you Jimmy Fallon videos and it's more likely to show you stuff related to Mark Ruffalo, which is going to mean a lot of Avengers stuff. Now your front page of YouTube is Jimmy Fallon, Mark Ruffalo, Avengers, maybe Matt Pat's game theory or movie theory about the Avengers. But if you clicked on something else, say like an article about Donald Trump, then maybe they get the idea that you like conservative politics. So now it's going to start showing you more stuff like news and Donald Trump stuff and the political race and the things along that lines. You tailor the YouTube experience based on what you click on and what you watch. The reason you are seeing this video right now is because you watch videos like this. Maybe you watched some of my videos in the past. Maybe you watch videos related to the topics in this video, uh, CNET, angry gamers, gaming in general, and, and you're seeing this video because of it. And you're going to see more videos like this because you've made it all the way almost to the end of this video. That's what YouTube does. It is not a publisher. It is an aggregator. It allows you to find what you want and suggest things based on what you've previously engaged with and watched. That's what YouTube does, and I really wish Ian had a better understanding of that when he wrote his article.
Now, the good news is I do think after talking to Ian the first time, he probably is smart enough to understand this. I would imagine he did understand this going into the article. I think he was being purposely obtuse here so that he could write the article he wanted, frame it the way he wanted to. I think the media does that. I think they are purposely obtuse. I think they purposely mislead their viewers. And I think they pretend so that they can get the same rage clicks they are accusing us YouTubers of trying to get. But I do like to look for the good in people, and I do want to believe that these guys convince themselves they are doing it for the greater good. Not just to profit the organization or to profit themselves, but at the end of the day, I think they're trying to evoke policy change or try to encourage a change in the culture, things along that lines, because they believe that is for the greater good. I know when I make YouTube videos about this stuff, I'm trying to change the gaming industry for the better. And I know for a fact I have because I've heard it from Microsoft, I've heard it from EA, I heard it from Todd Howard at E3 just this year. Your videos have an impact on our lives and the way our, we do our business and generally that impact is for the better. So I hope you guys can understand why my videos have been so negative over the last year because I'm trying to impact the gaming industry as a whole. At the very least, I'm hoping to ward you off from bad companies and bad games so that you can spend your money on good games and good companies. But at the same time, I'm also hoping to get these companies to set up and pay attention and hopefully do something better. I know Ian probably thinks he's doing the same thing. The only thing he did here was cost a few YouTubers their sponsorships, and that ain't cool. Here's what I will say. I do know at the end of the day, uh, Ian is not wrong because most of the YouTube gamers I watch these days are very, very negative. And we see very little positivity even when there are games that are very, very good. I see mostly that on Twitch, but not YouTube so much anymore. But again, again, I do click on a lot of very negative videos. So maybe that stuff's out there. I'm just not seeing it. Regardless, you can point to his influencers and say that we are making the gaming industry worse because we're making gamers angry, or you can face the reality of the fact that the gaming industry is already really, really bad, and we are a product of that environment because they keep screwing up and you guys keep getting angrier and angrier. When we talk about it, we try to self-correct, we try to make the industry a better industry, you guys engage, the industry stops screwing up, we've got nothing to talk about. That's the world I want to live in. So, industry... You can end this. You can end the negativity on YouTube. Just stop being a, a nightmare. <laughs> Just get it right. And yes, I am being a little bit hypocritical here because I do have my criticisms of how the quartering does his job, the way Jim Sterling does his job, the way all of us YouTubers do our job. That's another video for another time because I'm certainly not perfect either. Here's what I will say. Even though I disagree with some, how, uh, some of the things that we say and do, some of those things that other people say and do, I'm not trying to get anybody defunded. I'm not trying to get anybody deplatformed. So, Ian, at the end of the day, that's my biggest issue with what you did here. Now, this is all just one man's opinion. I could be wrong, and I think I was wrong to even accept that interview. I think in the future, I've learned my lesson. I'm just not going to participate in this kind of stuff because I don't like being thrown to the dogs like that. Guys, let me know if you think I'm right or wrong down in the comment section below. While you're down there, drop a like on this video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you were. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you have that notification bell checked. No, all notifications turned on can really help the channel these days, and I hope that you guys do that. Guys, as always, thank you for watching. I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again soon.